You're watching Plant Identification Through Personal Investigation with Angeline Whitmire. This plant portrait is for yellow poplar, Liriodendron tulipifera. Let's begin with the greening of the yellow poplar tree in the spring when the leaf bud opens. The two bud scales, referred to as valvate scales since they meet at their edges, spread apart. The first leaf grows up and out from its protective covering. The first part of the leaf we see is the underside as it unfurls from between the bud scales. Well, here's something a bit curious. Look at the thick green portion remaining after the leaf emerges. Whatever could that be? In this image, the central green portion looks like it's another set of bud scales. Is that possible? Oh, look, the central green tissue is opening to reveal a second yellow poplar leaf emerging. And here's the second leaf unfolding. Actually, what looks like scales within the original leaf bud scales are stipules. The pair of stipules are leaf-like appendages, which arise at the base of the new leaf's petiole and which encircle the twig. This yellow poplar tree is definitely starting to show its spring green color. Notice how long the petioles, the leaf stalks, are compared to the size of the leaf blade. Can you distinguish the two leaf petioles, the two original leaf bud scales, and the next two leaf stipules? How about in this image? And yes, there's another set of leaves growing further down the stem. This process of growing new stipules and new leaves continues during spring and summer months. Each leaf arises from the center of the growing stem's tip. The leaves seem to spiral up and out from that tip. In late summer, the stipules begin to turn yellow. Leaves are arranged alternately along the twigs. Eventually, the twigs become stems and then branches, alternating along the tree's trunk. Let's describe the yellow poplar's leaves. Here are two small, new leaves which have just emerged in the spring. The top surface of each leaf is smooth. The underside is a lighter shade of green and clearly shows the pinnate venation. The leaf is fairly square in overall shape and has four lobes. Several field guides state that the leaves could have six lobes, although that ranges from occasionally to rare. So far, I've only seen four-lobed leaves. The margins are smooth. Mature leaves are about four to six to ten inches, both across the blade and from the top to the bottom of the blade. This silhouette view emphasizes the relationship between the leaf blade and the leaf petiole. The leaf petioles are so long that the leaves easily wave and rustle in the slightest breeze. In the fall, the leaves turn bright yellow. However, if the end of the growing season has very little rain, the leaves may be spotted with brown and will not look quite so brilliant before dropping from the tree. The previously green stipules turn yellow, then brown. They shrivel and detach from the tree. In this photo, one of the stipules in the topmost pair has detached and left a scar. The second stipule is still holding on. The stipule in front is detaching, and here's the fine scar line remaining on the stem. Another stem with leaves and some stipules. A close view shows one stipule still attached in the background of the photo with a thin stipule scar line in front. 
The stipule scar looks like a ring as it encircles the stem. Initially, this ring is visually prominent. As the tree grows each year, the older stipule scars remain. The rings stretch thinner and thinner to look like fine white lines around the branch or trunk. When you look carefully at a twig, you can actually determine how much growth occurred in the current year by looking for the stipule scars. Where there are lots of rings close together, these indicate the rapid spring growth from the leaf bud. As the rings become more spaced out, you can tell that the growth spurt slowed down during the summer. Flowers grow on yellow poplar trees after they are 15 to 25 years old. During spring wind and rainstorms, the flowers are blown or knocked to the ground. Since the tree grows so tall, it's almost impossible to see the flowers while they are growing on the tree, unless you use binoculars. This next series of photos shows the flowers as you are likely to find them on the ground. Yellow poplar flowers grow at the tips of branches. The flower buds are protected by sepals. As the flower develops, the sepals spread open. The petals open outwards. Each petal ranges from a cream color nearest to the center of the flower, to orange, to green. When the petals expand, or when a storm knocks some of the petals away, the center of the flower becomes visible. The very center of the two-inch flower consists of a pointed cone, the ovary, which is surrounded by creamy white stamens. The yellow poplar flower has a shape reminiscent of a tulip flower. Consequently, many people refer to this tree as tulip poplar rather than yellow poplar. Here's a close view of the flower's center. The shape of the stamens foreshadows the shape of the mature seeds, even though the seeds arise from the central ovary, the cone in the middle, and not from the stamens. When the ovary matures, it looks like a bristly cone. The cone, about three inches long, consists of dozens of samaras, winged seeds which are each about one to one and a half inches long. The samaras gradually break away from the central axle. Each samara contains two seeds and a set of relatively long, narrow wings. These wings allow the samara to be carried by the wind to a location far from the parent tree. As the samaras drift away, the very sharp pointed axis remains on the tree. Sometimes the entire cone-like cluster of samaras are knocked to the ground. A careful look reveals dried yellow poplar leaves covering the ground beneath the seeds. Young twigs are brown with a hint of yellow or green. Sometimes they take on a reddish tone. Larger stems or branches are definitely gray and marked with white dots or fine white lines along their length. The trunk of a sapling or young tree usually has a green cast with a sprinkling of white dots. When a branch grows from the trunk of the tree, it has a distinctive dark chevron around that area of the trunk. The bark of an older tree, about 10 years old, shows developing white vertical lines mixed in with the gray bark. A couple of the branches are dark brown because they have died and not yet broken off. A dead branch broke from the tree here. Check out the bark pattern above and below the former branch site. This bark looks quite different, as if it's not from the same type of tree. Actually, this is the bark of a very old yellow poplar tree, midway up its trunk. Here's the bark closer to eye level on this very old tree. It's difficult to comprehend and appreciate the size of this tree from this particular photo. It is hundreds of years old and is protected within the Joyce Kilmer Memorial Forest in North Carolina. Let's back up a bit and relook at the white dots on the bark. These are lenticels on a sapling. 
lentisols on a yellow poplar, about twice the age of the previous tree. As a tree grows, the lentisols become more pronounced and almost diamond-shaped. This shadowed image gives a sense of the depth of the lentisols within the bark. Notice how the lentisols are beginning to look like vertical white lines in the bark. All the bark characteristics previously mentioned become important identifiers of the tree during winter. Picking up where we left off with the fall season. While the current year's leaves are dying, the tree develops leaf buds for next year's spring leaves. Each leaf bud has an elongated spatula shape. The overall shape is wide along one dimension and narrow if you look at it from the side. It is flattened and blunt, as one field guide describes the terminal bud. During the winter season, you can use these distinctly shaped leaf buds as an identifying characteristic for yellow poplar. In addition to the leaf buds growing at the tips of each branch, smaller leaf buds grow at other points along the branch. This photo shows the leaf bud at the tip of a side branch. Observe the stipule scar on the main branch as well as on the very young side branch. While bark and leaf buds are key identifiers during the winter season, there's a third important visual cue during winter. That is the leaf scar. Wherever a leaf grew, died, and detached from the tree, the stem or branch has a leaf scar. In the yellow poplar, the leaf scar is elliptical to nearly circular in shape. Within the leaf scar are tiny dots marking the location of vascular tissue transporting nutrients to and from the leaf. These dots are the bundle scars. Yellow poplar has many bundle scars within each leaf scar. Here we see the leaf scar and just above it is a stipule scar. The photo of this narrow branch has a lot of information. We can see a small side branch, which has probably grown for just one season, as it has only a few stipule scars, the rings, showing. A new leaf bud resides at the tip of this side stem, above a leaf scar. This small side branch is growing below another older side branch, which has red-brown bark and white lenticels. The primary branch is also dotted with white lenticels, and it has a large leaf scar below the smallest side branch. It also has a thin stipule scar below the first side branch. The larger branch has a green cast to the bark color, and is darker in the area where the first side branch occurs. This darkening bark will become the characteristic chevron marking at the branch site. Regarding leaf scars, it is possible to see older leaf scars expanded and stretched on the bark of a growing tree's trunk. One final identifier for yellow poplar during the winter months is its seeds. The seed clusters may break off the branch and fall to the ground. The seeds, along with the dead leaves, litter the ground. The seed end of the Samara is very hard and very sharp. It can easily get stuck between the treads of shoe soles. Occasionally, an entire branch will die and fall beneath a tree. The yellow poplar seeds come down during winter storms and melt into the snow. These are all indicators that a yellow poplar tree is nearby. But you have to look up, way up, to check the topmost branches of the tree. When you do, you will see the yellow poplar Samara clusters growing from the tips of branches. When the sun shines on them just right, you can see they are brown. Or maybe you'll see the silhouette of those seed clusters with a sharply pointed central axle and the outline of leaf buds. In this final section, I'd like to share some more general information about yellow poplar. Here are two yellow poplar trees demonstrating the overall form of the tree with its single straight trunk. As a youngster, the tree may have multiple trunks. However, as the years go by, the tree prunes itself. A mature tree may not have any branches until 30 feet or more up its trunk. Yellow poplar prefers moist, well-drained soils and dislikes shaded areas. It grows best as a succession plant, reclaiming old fields. 
and along wooded edges. Most people find yellow poplar growing about 50 to 100 feet tall. Yet, this tree can grow 200 feet tall and can live for 200 years. These yellow poplars, growing within the Joyce Kilmer Memorial Forest, demonstrate how magnificent the tree can be. Yellow poplar is one of only two species in the Liriodendron genus. Liriodendron tulipifera grows in the eastern portion of North America, generally east of the Mississippi River. The second Liriodendron species grows in China. This is Angeline. Thank you for watching and learning about Liriodendron tulipifera, also known as yellow poplar. Visit identifythatplant.com for more images of yellow poplar for plant identification resources, and for information about how you can confidently master the skill of correct plant identification.